Have you ever wondered what it means when people talk about storing things in the cloud? How can you store things in a cloud? If you're like me, you know what a cloud is. And you sure can't store anything there except, you know, maybe rain. But did you know your iPhone and iPad have built-in iCloud storage? Well, it turns out this really isn't all that complicated. If you'd like to understand what iCloud is all about, then stick around. I'll break it down in a few easy steps. Hi, my name is Rich and welcome to the channel. I do my best to help beginners and seniors get the most out of their iPhone and iPad the easy way. You know, no crazy complicated stuff here. And if that sounds like it might be helpful to you, then please consider subscribing. But either way, these videos are all free and I hope they're helpful. Today I'm going to talk to you about Apple's iCloud and to set things straight, it's not a cloud, it's a service, a storage service. And if you own an iPad or an iPhone, you probably have taken pictures and written notes and added files and set up calendars, probably other stuff too. Both your iPhone and iPad have a relatively small amount of internal storage. And once that storage is full, what do you do? Well, what do you do when your suitcase gets full? You get another suitcase. iCloud is kind of like that second suitcase, only a whole lot more. If you have iCloud backing up your data properly, if you drop and break your iPhone or iPad, you can simply buy a new device, log back in using your Apple ID, and all your pictures, files, calendars, and such will just show up, nothing lost. If you lose or someone steals your device, all your data is protected. These backups stored on iCloud can be used to restore everything to your new iPhone or iPad. That allows you to be up and running as if the new device had always been yours. So in today's video, I'm going to show you three simple things. How to check your local storage, you know, see how much you're using. How to check your iCloud storage and buy more if you need it because, you know, it's not free. And then how to make sure iCloud is turned on and backing up what you want to be backed up. All right, let's get started. The first thing I want to talk to you about is just how to check your local storage. Um, and by that I mean you have things that are stored physically on your iPad and then things that are stored up in the cloud or on iCloud. And sometimes it's good to know how much space you have left on your own iPad or your iPhone. I'm using an iPad today. So to check your local storage you simply go into settings and you go to general and then you go to iPad storage and here it'll give you a little line that shows you what's being used. I have 64 gigabyte of space on this iPad and I've used almost 50 gig of that so I'm getting pretty full on this iPad. But the iPad gives you ways to sort of clean that up. So for example it says you can remove older downloads from podcasts you can offload unused apps and you can auto delete old conversations that are like a year old or older and that's kind of handy so I'm going to do that. It says right here I can save 10 gigabyte of space by removing older downloads from podcasts so I'll click enable and then I'm going to click offload unused apps and then click enable and I'm going to auto delete old conversations. I'll enable. And now this is updated and I've only used 38 gig of my 64 gig. So I was able to get some space back on my local iPad. And as you scroll down through here, you can see what's using space on your iPad. These are all the apps I have and how much space they're using. I have quite a few apps on this iPad, as you might suspect. But that is how you check local storage. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is how to check your iCloud storage. So if you go back into settings again, and you go up to your name at the very top where it says Apple ID, iCloud Media and Purchases, and you tap on it, then you go into iCloud. And here you can see I have 200 gigabyte of iCloud storage and I'm using about 90 gigabyte. 
89.5, so I'm not using quite half of what I'm paying for. On the iPhone and iPad, Apple gives you five gigabyte of storage space for free. So most of the time, unless you have a lot of stuff on your iPad like I do, five gigabyte might just be fine. That might be all you need. But sometimes you need more space. And then you can see what I've stored here, photos, docs, others, and family. I've got a family sharing plan. And here you can see where it says change storage plan. You can tap on that. And you can see that I have purchased the 200 gigabyte plan per month. So it's $2.99 a month. $3 a month isn't too bad. I, I don't worry about 30 six bucks a year to know that all of my pictures and everything are backed up properly. That's not too high of a price to pay. If you've purchased a plan and you're not using as much storage as you've purchased and you want to downgrade to something cheaper, you can do that too. You can just tap on downgrade options. And now I could go back to the free plan or I could go to a 50 gigabyte plan. In my case, I won't do either of those because I'm using 90 gigabyte now. So it looks like the 299 plan for me is about right. But that is how you buy more storage if you need more storage on iCloud. The last thing I want to talk to you about is how to make sure iCloud is turned on and that you're backing up the programs and the data that you want backed up. So once again, we're going to go back into settings and you'll tap on your name. Now, you're automatically logged into iCloud when you get a new phone or a new iPad and you set up your Apple ID. However, you can sign out of iCloud. And down here at the very bottom, if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see where it says sign out. If you sign out there, you're no longer connected to iCloud and everything you have in iCloud doesn't sync back with your devices. So it's important to maintain that connection and to stay signed in. And since it's done by default, you typically don't have to worry about it. But if you're taking pictures on your phone and you realize they're not backing up or showing up on your iPad, it may be because you're not logged into iCloud. And this is where you go and check in. And if you're signed out, this will say sign in. And you'll tap on it and then sign in and then everything will sync back up. And that's how you make sure that you're signed in. Now you want to take a look and make sure you're backing up everything to iCloud that you want to back up. Here you tap on iCloud and you see that Photos is turned on. And I think Photos is about the most important thing. There are some documents I have that are super important, but most of the time I can replace those documents. But gosh, I just can't replace a photo. So I make sure Photos is turned on. iCloud backup. Don't let that confuse you. That's just saying that iCloud Backup is turned on. iCloud Drive, that gets a little confusing too because now we have iCloud and iCloud Drive. iCloud is really like your entire filing cabinet. iCloud Drive is just like a drawer in your filing cabinet. And there you store things that just don't fit into other places very well. But I keep iCloud Drive turned on. I make sure my contacts and my calendars, my reminders, my notes, are all backed up to iCloud and that way anything that I'm looking at on my iPad if I'm away from home I can see on my iPhone. Likewise most people back up their messages I don't. Some of these things you can just pick and choose. I like to keep track of stocks that I have and so I back those up and these are all of the applications that I have on my iPad and you'll also have a list on your iPad and if they're important to you, you can simply turn them on or turn them off by tapping the little button on the side. And that way you can pick and choose what's going to be backed up to iCloud. It's really pretty simple and that's all there is to it. I've only touched the surface of iCloud and it's deep integration with your iPhone or iPad, but this video was designed to just give you an overview of what iCloud is and how it works. And I hope it accomplished that. You know, some of this stuff can get kind of technical. Well, anyway, that's about it for this tutorial. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.